Good morning. It's time to talk from SDN. So what I wanted to do today is talk about the transformation that has taken place around SDN as we have moved across the decade into the 5G era. And to start off, I just want to talk about start talking about how SDN initially evolved. It started, it was seeded in the academia, meant to be a science project at the beginning of the decade. And as we are on ending the decade, it has become the transformation driver for both enterprise as well as telco networks. And the reason that has happened is because it has mirrored the change that's taking place in these networks as well, which are going to undergoing an unprecedented and foundational transformation. If you look at enterprise networks themselves, right, there is a digital transformation that's underway that's driven by the adoption of multi-cloud, which means a combination of public cloud, private cloud, as well as SaaS offers. And on top of it, you have a workforce that's global, highly distributed, and that wants to have connectivity on demand alongside dynamic security policies. And a similar set of changes taking place in the service provider networks, whereby with the emergence of 5G, there's a new set of use cases, and there is a need to offer on-demand services. And last but not the least, and this is the unsaid part, there's a need for you as telcos to compete with the public cloud providers. All of this requires SDN, and all of this requires a changing role around SDN. If we look at the enterprise networks to begin with, there's a digital transformation, there's a business transformation aspect where the expectation is to improve customer retention. There's the expectation is to lower cost. The expectation is to lower the process time windows by an order of magnitude. And all of this is putting unprecedented pressure on the IT organization itself, which in turn translates into pressure for the networks to change. Traditionally, there has been a gap between how IT operates and how networks operates. And this is where SDN came in, in terms of lowering the gap between IT and IP, changing the networks that were highly closed, complex, costly, to something that is simple, operationally efficient, and, and automated. And as that happened, the use cases have also changed. There is a fluidity to around these use cases. Just to take the example of one use case, that is enterprise branch connectivity. For decades, it was dominated by VPN services, L3 MPLS or L2 VPLS. And then there was an automated secure connectivity that, for, that was offered by SD-WAN, maybe around 2014, 2015 timeframe that changed the use case. But that's not sufficient. As this cloud-enabled enterprise is coming into its own, there is also a demand for value-added services, things like firewall, IDS, IPS, or voice gateways or IoT to be offered alongside SD-WAN. There's a demand for multi-cloud policy and controls, common cloud governance and cloud transparency, if you so want to call it. And there is a need for holistic end-to-end -end security, which goes beyond just perimeter-based security. So all of these are transforming the enterprise SDN use cases. A similar fluid situation exists around the service provider network themselves. And this is driven by, largely by 5G, 5G being the new architecture that is IP only. It's not just about speeds and feeds. It focuses on application and services. SDN in the telco space was about providing automation for services and transport. But with 5G, that has changed. What started out as delivering virtual networks that connect VMs and then onto containers, now needs to cater to an ever-growing list of use cases such as NFV, which is the transformation of core transport functions, or core network functions, rather, into virtualized forms. It is about the distributed telco cloud, whereby you see there are these edge and far edge sites, your central offices and points of presence that are becoming points of hosting and service delivery. There is an aspect of of inter-VNF connectivity and routing. There is packet acceleration, where things like smart NICs are on the horizon and are picking up much faster than one would have thought 12 months ago. And finally, there's an end-to-end -end aspect of transport engineering, which is NFIX that uh, Rudy spoke about. Bottom line, changing use cases, the role and the demands on SDN are evolving and continue to evolve. The other way to look at it is from a chronological perspective. And when SDN started out, 2012, 2014, 
right out of the academia. It was about network virtualization in the data center. Create virtual networks, provide isolation to VMs, and that was the promise of SDN. As we move further down into the middle of the decade, that sort of network virtualization became more holistic in terms of offering support for a software-defined data center in terms of automation and agility that you need to deliver a software-defined data center that included containerized applications, that included bare metal assets, that had a degree of use cases that went beyond the data center, for example, into DC connectivity. And at the same time, over-the-top VPNs, this is, this is before the term SD-WAN sort of came into vogue, came about, which offered automated connectivity to branch offices. And as we stepped further into the decade, this again transformed in terms of software-defined WAN, where connectivity was embellished with value-added services, cloud access, as well as security. And then there is the emergence of NFE, which is no longer just a theoretical concept and is very much real re being realized in terms of telco cloud deployments. And as we look further out, and further out in this industry is two to three years, you see the rise of new use cases in terms of IoT, in terms of artificial intelligence, in terms of machine learning, and then public cloud encompasses all of them alongside security. What this means is you need an SDN solution, and SDN implies automation and agility that has the necessary flexibility, that has the necessary ability to change, to evolve to all of these use cases, because this picture is not going to be static. This picture will continue to change as time moves along. That is for sure. And this is what we did at Nuage. What we did is we created a single platform that provides flexibility and adaptability to morph to new use cases and applications. VCS and VNS are just the name of applications built on this platform, virtualized cloud services, virtualized network services, and they have addressed a range of use cases. As an example, when we started started Nuage, and when we delivered network virtualization or SDN for the data center, all the apps, it was all about virtual machines. It was all about virtualization. Then containers came about with the rise of Kubernetes, with the rise of OpenShift. And given the flexibility in how the platform is architected, we were able to adapt and assimilate those use cases. Similarly, if we talk about SD-WAN, starting with connectivity, the concept of what is known as universal CPE came about, which is to host a range of value-added services on a host platform that has routing as one of the functions, but also has security or other functions that can be easily hosted and lifecycle managed. And again, because of, again, the same flexibility, we were able to do it with the same platform. And that is the engineering from change and the flexibility that Nuage offers. The other way to look at it is in terms of what the competition is doing or how SDN has evolved in the rest of the industry, and that is in terms of silos or point solution. If you look at just one example in terms of SDN for telco cloud or SDN for SD-WAN or WAN and public cloud, these would be completely different silos, which means that you would need a system with a cloud-based management plane, a controller, a set of endpoint assets, for the data center, and similarly, a similar or uh, different set for the van. And that implies with these solutions that you have a different management plane. There is, there is no commonality in terms of a policy you define on one side of the network with the other side. There's a different control plane. They don't talk to each other. And finally, the data plane in terms of the virtual networks that you create in the data center and the van, they are completely ships in the night. And those, these are the generation one SDN solution. To take a concrete example, if you, as a telco, wanted to offer a service whereby your enterprise WAN customers who are riding on SD-WAN want to access, let's say, a security, services, security service that's provided in one of your edge sites. Now, for, to implement that with a solution of this type, you would need to, again, manually provision both the WAN as well as the data center and somehow manually make sure that those two policies are in sync and there is a stitching between the two virtual networks. Possible, but it's manual, complex, and time-consuming. And that's generation one SDN. Whereas generation two SDN from Nuage changes this paradigm completely by offering a single platform that has reached across telco cloud to WAN, branch, as well as to public cloud, as well as SaaS offers. 
What it ha offers in terms of a common platform is a common policy. It has con a control plane which includes the forwarding and routing state that is shared between multiple network domains, from cloud to transport to SaaS as well as public offers. And it has the ability to create overlays or virtual networks that are stretched together with gateways seamlessly without requiring automation. And in the previous example, what it does is, again, a telco service that's a security service being, ex being accessed by an SD-WAN user is to offer that with a single click, with a single pane of glass. So you have a unified policy. You don't have to create multiple overlays. You don't have to stitch them together. And this has, goes back to our, our founding vision around Nuage, which was to offer a SDN platform for data center van and beyond. The idea was, has been, and will continue to be around connecting applications to users. It's very simple, but at the same time, the nature of applications has changed. The application infrastructure comes in forms of virtual machines, in terms of containers, in terms of bare metal applications, which still exist and will continue to exist for various reasons. And they could be hosted in the public cloud, they could be in the private cloud, or they could be in one of those distributed far-edge telco sites. And these apps could be enterprise apps, these could be web apps, and increasingly, these could be network functions. And these need to connect with users. The user could be a, a human, which is the most obvious kind of a user, a customer, an employee, or a partner with its own set of policies, with its own set of access controls, with its own set of network views. Or it could be a device from the power around a, a digital sign, for example, or a connected car. Or it could be a machine in terms of an autonomous vehicle. And all of these need to connect with the same platform, with the same policy set. And that's the promise that Nuad offers. And what is worth highlighting is it is being done with scale and flexibility, both of which are non-negotiable in terms of founding principles or architectural principles that a future-looking SDN must have. And these solutions is what we have called as SD-WAN 2.0, or second-generation SD-WAN to distinguish it from the first generation solution which are being offered across silos and are much more simplistic. In terms of how these solutions are getting, or the Nuad solution is getting used, just to take a few examples. The first is around UPMC, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, a large healthcare enterprise based in central United States. And UPMC has multiple hospital as well as remote clinic facilities. Some of them happen to be actually be in Europe. They have over 80,000 employees. And they had been using Nuage in their data center since 2012 for automation and, and network virtualization. But as time moved on, their use case has changed because they want to connect their remote clinics onto the central data center. But even more interestingly, they have a category of employees, the radiologists. And these radiologists deal with high fidelity, ultra high density images all the time. And they want to work from home because they very often they get a call at 2 AM to analyze a critical image. And they have to drive in just to be able to access that image. So these, what UPMC did was install these radiologist screens in each of their home office locations connected them over the internet using Nuage SD-WAN. That allows them to access the radiologists working at home to access the application or the data in the data center, which is in a private data center that UPMC owns in a secure and automated fashion with security policies that are, again, defined using the cloud platform that can be audited and that adhere to the, the regulatory compliance levels that are required in the healthcare industry. The second example from the region here is around Exxon and BT, or British Telecom, which I don't have to tell you who BT is. But Exxon is an enterprise that's a market leader in water treatment and chemical distribution. They're largely based in Australia and New Zealand. And with massive expansion underway in South Asia as well as South America. And Exxon, in terms of they have 1,000-plus you know, employees in 16-plus countries, and they are in process of uh, transforming their network from a uh, legacy network that had a limited bandwidth and that, that took them 
months and in some cases years to bring up a remote site because the enterprise network connectivity was not available. And they did it by utilizing Nuage platform through BT's Agile Connect service. And Agile Connect is BT's global SD-WAN service offered exclusively on top of the Nuage platform. And what Exom has done is with this service now, they have connected all their sites over internet. So they have a 7x bandwidth increase for some of the sites which had very low bandwidth based on the legacy mechanism. And all of the traffic, the internet traffic, breaks out directly from the site onto the internet. And for this application, enterprise application traffic goes to a centralized gate or gateway or a hub. But more importantly, they also have certain sites on, or certain applications that are hosted in Microsoft Azure Cloud. And the Nuage solution provides with its SD-WAN 2.0 paradigm and with, with its ability to extend itself into public cloud, seamless connectivity, and a common governance model when they need to access applications that reside in Azure, which is done through BT gateways, virtual gateways that are hosted in Azure, and Exxon is able to access them. And the integration of the security policies is, again, a critical element of this, this BT offer towards Exxon. The third example I want to take here is around ATEL. This is slightly different from the other two because the, the previous two examples sort of pertain to SD-WAN front and center, and this one pertains to telco cloud. And again, in term, Nuage parlance, in Nuage terms, they're all, these are solutions built on the same platform. So they are just different applications built on the same platform, but still, there is, there is, there is a difference. In this case, and Airtel, for those of you who don't know, is a large Indian telco provider. They provide wireless wireline, mobile, as well as voice services in 20 countries across Asia and Africa. And they had some data center sites. Again, they had a haphazard sort of an infrastructure where some of their COs as well as MSOs had switched over and become hosting sites uh, for EPC, virtualized EPC, and for Volti. But they wanted to streamline the infrastructure because they, the, they believe in the evolution towards edge and far edge computing that's necessary as part of 5G. And they engaged Nokia and Nuage in order, to, in order to achieve it. And the Nuage scope here in each of these distributed sites was in terms of taking these EPC and Volte VNFs and providing connectivity amongst these. It was in terms of providing packet acceleration that is necessary for some of these gateway functions that is not available out of the box on an x86 server. And it was in terms of the DC fabric management itself that was necessary to provide inter-DC connectivity. And again, this, as a result of this, they have a leaf spine architecture, a modernized data center infra, uh, architecture that they are in process of rolling out all across India. So those. Now, with those customer examples and the evolution of SD-WAN, what Nuage has done is delivered the SD-WAN 2.0 architecture. But the clock on innovation doesn't stop and is ongoing as we step into 2019 and beyond. And I wanted to touch upon a few key things that we are doing this year that highlight the innovation and that highlight the change that we are bringing to the market. On the bottom of the slide are aspects that we are doing that pertain specifically to telco cloud in terms of NFE networking, which is to connect VNFs at scale and to have routing amongst these virtual network functions, accelerated data plane, worth highlighting the role of smart NICs, which are specialized NIC hardware that allow you to offload packet processing and forwarding from a OVS or a virtual switch onto hardware so that the, comp the burden doesn't go on compute, and that's necessary for certain functions. And things like flexible platform and integration where for distributed far edge sites, we want to support a mix and match of versions controlled by the same cloud platform. But I want to talk even more about the top, the top, the top few lines which pertain to SD-WAN. And the reason is the change is the fastest and the change is the most um, staggering in this domain. And what has happened with SD-WAN over the course of 2018 and as we stepped into 2019 is it has gone from an early adopter status to into mainstream. So it is no longer a early technology, but it's a, it's a fact for enterprise network connectivity. And that requires a scale that is not usually possible 
with solutions that were designed with a point function of just providing connectivity. And therefore, as we step into 2019, alongside the, flexi the scale of the platform itself, we are a few doing a few things to emphasize and deal with scale problems that come with such global deployments. A few things we have done. The first thing is we have embraced x86 fully and completely. All of our CPEs are based on x86. They are, they are completely off the shelf. All the innovation is in hardware. We have taken our forwarding plane that was in the kernel of the software and moved into user space using a technology known as DPDK. What it does is allows us to optimize packet copies and pin specific CPU cores on these x86 boxes for forwarding purposes versus other control as well as application awareness tasks. And that has given us a massive boost in performance from 2x to up to 10x in case, depending on the processor and depending on the use case. The second thing which we have done is we are introducing this year a range of new CPEs that are based on Intel Denverton and Skylake, which are the next generation Intel processor platforms. And we expect, again, a, a massive improve in the price to performance ratio which is the reason we decided to ride on this x86 curve. And I'm most excited about this little device, which I wanted to just show it to you guys. It is NFG C series C600. And this, it looks like a drone, but does everything but fly. And what it has is it's based on a two core Intel Denverton processor. It has six ports. It has integrated Wi-Fi and LTE, including SIM connectivity and it offers blazing performance for this price point and includes embedded security, includes application awareness, full cloud controls, the entire shebang in this tiny little package. And this is just an example of the scale. This is the example of the, the performance that we are able to get out of x86. The other few things we have done is, one is mesh groups, which I'll talk about in a second. The second aspect here, or the second pillar, is multi-cloud controls, and here again, we have embellished the offer that we have around accessing SaaS clouds, as well as offering native public cloud controls. In terms of the user experience, again, something I'll touch upon in a bit more detail, we have a completely redefined and reimagined user experience in 2019, which defines how the end customer consume SD-WAN. And finally, in terms of security, we have the most holistic story around security, which we are embellishing with offering around IDS, IPS, antivirus, as well as user-aware policies within this small form factor itself. To look at, just to give you a taste of some of these things in a bit more detail, I just wanted to look at some of them. The first one is the need for mesh groups. As I said, as SD-WAN continues to scale to thousands of enterprises and to tens of thousands of endpoints, the normal architecture or the, or the day one architecture in terms of full mesh communication between branch sites begins to break down. This is because the state that you need to maintain in terms of security associations, in terms of ACLs, in terms of routes, for each node is doesn't scale. And you cannot go across continents by having this full mesh connectivity. Moreover, what we see is for audit, as well as compliance and political reasons, in certain cases, the data going out of the country is expected to go through a central hub. And this puts this full mesh communication at a disadvantage. Some of our competitors have started by offering hub and spoke models, but they are fairly limiting to begin with. But a model needs to be devised that makes the be takes the best of both worlds in terms of hub and spoke as well as full mesh connectivity. And what we have done is created a paradigm called mesh groups which will be available in the forthcoming release next month. And what it does is offers hierarchical SD-WAN. So you can have SD-WAN communication groups that are contained to a particular geography or a particular administrative domain. And within that, that group, you have full mesh communication. But any time you need to go outside of group, you go through a backbone, a hub, clustered hub backbone that's hosted at a global level or that's hosted at a multi-geography level, and you traverse through that and get the connectivity. It's, again, conceptually simple, but of course, in terms of implementing it at scale, making sure that we have optimized the routes, the IPsec key distribution, having the performance, 
That's what, where the challenges are, and we are in the process of delivering it. The second thing I want to talk, touch upon is multi-cloud support. And here, what we have done um, in 2019 is in terms of we always offered connectivity and cloud governance into cloud platforms such as AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. And what we are doing here is support now these cloud providers as they appreciate the importance of SD-WAN, offer native controls or native APIs for connectivity into them. And that's what we are embracing in 2019 in terms of having these native cloud APIs for not just AWS and Azure, but also for Zscaler. And more importantly, we also now have the ability to host our platform in the public cloud itself, starting with AWS, which has some operational benefits, which you can trade off in terms of costs, as well as in terms of the complexity that you would that you would need to give up or gain as a result of hosting the platform in AWS. And we have a customer here, OrangeX, from, from, from the region who's doing exactly that in terms of hosting the Nuage platform in AWS and getting uh, enterprise connectivity services. The next thing, and in some ways the most important, what we have done for this year is the change in the user experience or the user interface. And to understand this, we need to just step back and understand the change in how end customers attribute value and how the value or the loyalty is increasingly to the customer experience or to the user experience. And that's true about your Apple iPhones. That's true about Amazon. That's true about Netflix. It's all about the user experience. There is a desire to focus on the needs and to automate the means. And same is true about SD-WAN. You can have the most sophisticated SD-WAN service with serving all the use cases. But if it is, cannot be easily consumed, if it cannot be easily understood and accepted by the end enterprise user who is not a network geek, you would have failed and that service will fail to pick up. With this learning in mind, and again, this did not come overnight, this came over a period of time, what we have been doing since last year, and we are ready to take the curtains off, is to have a new redefined user experience for SD-WAN end customers. Not for you as telco users, for you, we have a much more richer, interface that provides the flexibility, that provides the controls. But for the end user, we have redefined the user experience. And this is based on modern web scale infrastructure on a React-based UI. It is interactive. It has intuitive workflows. And it's flexible branding and multi-tier dashboards. And the way we went about this, and this is also important, is not through a technology-driven or engineering-driven approach, but we take, took the, one of the best user experience teams in the industry, that's part of Nokia, and had them run research workshops that interviewed enterprise IT users that spoke to a range of uh, resellers as well as product managers at service providers. Then we took those requirements and transformed them into tangible product deliverables, created the mock-ups, created the POCs and the early demos, delivered them to that user group, and based on the feedback, refined and rinse and repeat. And with, as a result of that, we have a fresh new user interface, which will be available next month. And that is, again, extremely application and user-centric. Just, just a couple of screenshots from it. For example, this is the van or your entire network view. Again, extremely visual, based on color codes, gives you a view not in terms of packets or routing protocols, but talks about the application, the throughput across the network, the top talker application, the health of the branches, and so on. And you can dig in further and look at each branch, and you can get a view of the health in terms of the operational status, in terms of status of the links, and again, get more advanced statistics and views in terms of bandwidth and applications and traffic of each type. So that these two sort of screenshots capture the essence of what this new user experience is about. And finally, in terms of security, like I mentioned, we have a holistic view around SD-WAN security that's not just limited to point security functions such as firewall or, or URL filtering, but we provide a range of security functions that allow you to detect what is happening in the network in terms of who is talking to whom, and also to respond to have autonomous learning where based on certain events, the system can respond and create particular network policies. And we are embellishing the third pillar of this, this security offering, which is the embedded security functions that are more perimeter-centric, 
where we have had end-to-end -end segmentation, L7 firewalls, and URL filtering as part of the product that's offered in the smallest form factor to the largest form factor with IDS, IPS, antivirus, and, and DDoS protection. And we are doing this in not to compete with the best in breed security providers. We believe they have a space. But to look at the requirements of some of the smaller branches, and some cases where it's not possible to have a full-scale firewall hosted or, or present alongside an SD-WAN CPE device. And in those cases, for those 70% of the use cases, these embedded functions are going to be sufficient. So we talked a little bit about sort of technology and what we are doing to move the needle here. But SDN is not just about technology. Technology is not an end in itself. And for this transformation between the current state of affairs to a future world, there are other aspects that come into play in terms of continuity, in terms of making sure that networks work with brownfield MPLS networks in case of the van, with old school bare metal assets in the data center. There's an aspect of business case because this is not a school project, so there has to be an element of modeling of new revenue streams as well as capex and operational impact. There's an aspect of operations to make sure that your troubleshooting is as reliable as your configuration, and that requires a different mindset around design. There's an ecosystem of partners so that you're not locked in with a single vendor, and there's a partnership with us as Nokia in terms of professional services, in terms of go-to-market services that allow you to, to bridge the gap between the current state of the network and the future. And here, as we look beyond technology, there are a couple of things that we are doing this year which are worth mentioning. The first is in terms of having an SD-WAN service provider go-to-market program. And this is to enable you, as telcos, to sell Nuage SD-WAN solutions. And it has three tenants in terms of joint marketing, where with this program we offer resources as well as people to do things like joint webinar, events, collateral, positioning, and help you develop your services. And the second aspect here is driving the pipeline. We have a robust and large enterprise sales team here within Nokia. And with this program, you would be able to work with them. You will have, be able to have touch points with them in order to develop a qualified pipeline, in order to have reviews with the customers, in order to have a sense of direction in terms of whom to approach and how to reach out to a set of customers within your network and outside of it. And finally, there is an aspect of sales enablement that allows you to do things like workshop, training, and also have direct access to our uh, business development resources in the BU in Mountain View and have access to a business relationship manager. All in all, it is about go-to-market enablement, which is an element of change which is not always easy, given that all of us are used to selling boxes and the paradigm of selling software services bundled with cloud, bundled with security, is, is, a, is a new journey where we can jointly help each other, and that's the motive behind this program. The second offer around services is a Nuage SD-WAN white label offer. And what this is, is it gives you the ability to have Nuage or Nokia host the centralized components of the SD-WAN service on your behalf. This is the cloud-based management system. This is the cloud-based controller. Those would be managed and deployed by Nokia. They will be maintained by Nokia. The support for those will be provided by, by Nokia. And what it does is why you would want to do it is to simplify your service offer. You would do it to be able to reduce the time to market. And this also reduces the upfront investment needed in the service. And it works for the cases where whether you are a small telco provider or you're a large provider who just doesn't want to jump into the SD-WAN bandwagon and want to dip your toes into the SD-WAN space. And you can do that by having cookie cutter service offers as opposed to customizing them. And again, I want to be very clear, this is not something us trying to create a service to sell to the enterprise and compete with you. No, that's not our goal. This is in terms of assisting you and enabling you to offer the service and giving you more options in terms of how you can get, take the service to market whether you want to have a bespoke offer hosted on your prem in AWS or have Nokia host it on your behalf. In the final section, I do want to talk a little bit about the competition in the SD-WAN space, simply because there's a new competitor, there's a new um, contender that's emerging every second, literally, as we speak in terms of this market. And the market is awash with 
competitors who have either simplistic, rebadged, or more solutions that they claim to be SD-WAN. There's a significant gap between what solutions can offer and what the requirements are. So as you begin to think about launching SD-WAN, as you are deluded with co collateral and promises of a brave new world, what you need to think about is this gap between what these solutions offer and the requirements. And in terms of categories, some of these solutions are simple cloud managed without taking names. These are Wi-Fi solutions, for example, that have been rebadged with a centralized management plane and some IPsec setup. There are some cloud band data plane offers from some, some uh, startups that were recently acquired. And they basically require you to have bookended solutions with issues around data integrity, as well as multi-tenancy and lack of support for multi for uh, VNFs, they're proprietary branch routers, companies that went into the CPE business, and as SD-WAN came about, did a pivot and added a management plane on top, and they basically have a proprietary CPE that's masquerading again as SD-WAN. And finally, a rebranded SD-WAN solution because of the dynamics in the security sort of the industry landscape, and more so in WAN optimization space where the MAN optimization market is disappearing very fast. All of those vendors have pivoted to SD-WAN and are claiming to be SD-WAN. What they are doing at is the cost of some of these requirements. For example, they very often lack true multi-tenancy. For example, they very often lack the ability to host value-added services on their platforms. And they lack the routing as well as forwarding gateways that are necessary to offer these services at scale. So it's very important for you to judge all of these offers again the holistic set of requirements before making, making a choice. And this is where the Nuage Boundaryless Agility or SD-WAN 2.0 comes in, in terms of offering or catering to requirements that go from WAN networking for multi-tenancy, routing, gateways for controllerless operations, so DC, and net, DC networking requirements that support any hypervisor, KVM, ASXi, Hyper-V, any type of workload, and to do it seamlessly across any type of cloud and at scale. And that is the essence of Nuage Networks SD-WAN, and that is the essence of second generation SD-WAN, and that's the essence of SD-WAN 2.0. Now, of course, the proof of pudding for all of this is in terms of customer deployments. And that's where we had a magnificent 2018, and we continued the momentum in 2019. You see there are a range of logos in terms of large enterprises, telcos, as well as cloud providers who are using Nuage for different set of use cases to offer automation and agility. But what unites them is, again, the underlying platform, which is the core of our offer. And in terms of recognition from analysts, we recently, AGC is a leading networking analyst firm, and they had a recent report that called out what constitutes an SD-WAN solution. Again, going back to what we were talking about earlier in terms of setting aside these masqueraded solutions or separating them from their core markets of WAN optimization versus pure SD-WAN. And in that report, they did a detailed analysis of the market share and came to the conclusion that Nuage is number one in terms of the market share in terms of telco SD-WAN. And that is due to our second generation solution, which is now in display in the demo room, and we have a range of breakout sessions that will talk in more detail about the features. Thank you.